Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Making Waves at Sea Level. I've realized that this podcast was launched at the end of September in 2014, and people were like, what? Why would you do a podcast? Who does a podcast? That's weird. And then it exploded after that. Everybody was doing a podcast by 2016 and 17, uh, but it's been a lot of fun to host this show. So today I want to talk about something really important, and that is why people matter more now than at any other time. You see, there's a lot of attention being paid right now to technology. In fact, for the past 30 years, most of our attention to what's happening, what's new, what's the new, new thing, what's next, has all been around the development of technology. We, as a society, have spent so much time looking at how tech is going to make our lives better. And in many ways, it has. And in many ways, it's also pulled us farther apart we thought that when social media came out, we were going to be able to connect with everybody. Nobody was ever going to feel lonely. We were always going to be connected. We were led to believe that likes, links, shares, and follows had real value when it came to our network and our relationships. But when I talk to people about who feels they have more close relationships now than they did previous to 20 years ago, most people shake their head. It's either about the same or they find that it's harder to make friends now than it used to be. Now, before you send me nasty grams, there's always people who say, no, it's been great. Yes, for some people, they have a social circle that has been developed all around social media. But for most people, many are left feeling more distant, more alone. But here's the thing. Technology unto itself is not bad. All of the social media and digital tools that we use to communicate, they're, they're all awesome. But here's where the problem comes in. And that is we have focused too much on the tech, and I think over the next few years, it's going to get worse. You can't open up a news source without reading about AI, AI, quantum computing, AI, and what they're talking about, about the future of how all of this stuff is going to get even bigger and stronger and smarter and more ubiquitous in our lives. That also creates a problem that we're not paying attention to human connections. Now, I have been speaking for clearly close to 20 years now, about the idea of how your network, your personal brand, and your engagement in your community really makes a difference. And I really do believe that when we get down to where we are today and where we're going in the next five or 10 years, this topic of people and the relationships that you build is more important than it's ever been in all of the time I've been speaking about it. I think we're about to see massive changes in the world due to all of this technology it's going to take a big pop the way technology changed the world when the internet came out or the smartphone came out. I think that's going to look small compared to what's going to happen over the next decade, which means that if you want to set yourself up for opportunity, if you want to have like a secret weapon that's going to set you apart from your competition, that's going to bring you opportunities, there's nothing that's going to matter as much as the relationships you build with people. And the truth is, as I said, a like, a link, a share, and a follow, it's not really a relationship. So chasing digital, you know, connections to people, it's going to leave you, it's going to leave you behind and it's going to leave you feeling empty. Now is the time to engage inside your company with coworkers, inside the community where you live, and inside the industry where you work. The more you can show up in person and actually talk to people and build relationships, and, and ask questions of people, and be there to, to help them. You know, if you show up to network just thinking, Haha, what can all these people do for me? Networking's going to disappoint you. I have people all the time who tell me, oh, I went out and I couldn't, nobody gave me a new job. Nobody sent me opportunities. Well, networking doesn't work that way. You walk into a room, people don't know you, they don't care about you, and, and the first time they meet you, they care more about themselves than they do about you. In fact, they don't care about you at all for the most part. People don't care about you until they know you care about them. They don't care about you until you've shared some real experiences. So now is the time you have to get out and network and engage and build relationships with people and find ways to make sure that you're actually becoming friends with people. Because when people care about you, they're going to bring you opportunities. When bad things come along that's going to derail your career, there's going to be people there who can give you a boost when you're trying to climb that ladder starting over again. But here's the thing. Relationships don't happen by accident and they don't happen quickly. So I believe that with all the focus that's going on in technology, 
if you want to stand out in your industry, in your company, heck, just in general, take the time to invest in people. Be present. When there's an event happening in your community or your industry, show up. I talk to people all the time who are like, oh, you know, I don't really want to go to those events. It's awkward. I don't know anybody. Well, yeah, it's always awkward and you don't know anybody the first time you go and attend. But once you get involved in an association and an organization and you show up three times, five times, 10 times, all of a sudden you're going to feel that you're part of that community. Look, here's the thing you have to remember. Meeting someone once does not make them part of your network. Meeting someone once makes them someone you have met once. And there is a huge difference between someone you've met once and someone who you've established a long-term and mutually beneficial relationship with. So you need to be the person who takes action. If you're sitting at home, if you're just sending out things on social media, no one's going to show up and be there for you. You have to actually be a contributor to the whole community. And if you don't feel there is a community where you're being welcomed, start your own. Use Meetup or other ways to communicate with people and, and host a monthly gathering of some sort. Or go to a local or an industry group. This is the thing that always gets me. People say, oh, I, I don't see anybody doing what I want. So they try to start their own group and it struggles and no one's there to run it. You know what? Go to an association in your community or in your industry and say, hey, I have an idea and I will run this. They'll give you the backing. They'll give you the list. They'll help promote it. And you can be the person who drives it forward. And if it works, you're going to shine. You're going to build a reputation. So for this episode, I want you to think right now, as we're wrapping this up, who are the 10 most connected people? Who are the 10 people I'm the most connected to in my business world? Actually write down a list and then make another list. of Who are the 30 people who you would most like to be that connected with as you are with the first 10? And then the third list, is a list of 10 people you don't know yet. You don't even know their names necessarily. So leave those 10 blank. But as you meet people, add their name to that list. So you sort of have three tiers. The people you're already really close with, cultivate those relationships and keep them going. The second one, the, the big one, is the people you already know, but you're not that well connected with. Find ways to move that relationship forward. But here's the thing. It's gonna take you five years to move just half of those people forward because not everyone's going to want to be a better friend with you. Not everyone has the time. Some people will move away. Some people won't understand why people matter. And it's going to take a lot of time of going to lunch, of calling them, of giving them ideas, of finding out what their problems are and helping to be a solution finder for them. Move some more of those people into that close column that you have. And then along the way, over the next five or six years, when you meet somebody who's interesting, add them to that third list and make sure that you're following up with them because meeting someone once doesn't matter. Networking is built in the follow-up. Networking doesn't happen at networking events. That's just a tool so that you can cross paths with people. The people who really succeed when it comes to the people side of business, who build reputations and brands that bring them all kinds of opportunities, those people are the ones who've invested the time to build relationships. It doesn't happen by accident. Sometimes people say, well, but he or she, they're an extrovert. Everybody loves to be around them. Sure, once again, they're an outlier. But for the most of us, we actually have to work at building friendships and relationships. And we do it by letting people know that we see them. We're in a world where people feel very invisible. And I think now is the time where you can pull ahead if you just are there as part of a community, as a connector. Let's face it, when we have more community, more collaboration, and more conversations, we can solve all problems. So nothing will, will expand your opportunities as much as growing your network and really getting close relationships with people who you care about and they care about you. And my final thing is remember, not everybody you want to build a relationship with is going to give a damn about you. You know what? There's 8 billion people on the planet. Don't worry about the people who are being asshats who aren't there to help you or who are selfish or who are takers. Move on. When you figure that somebody's not into you, move on. But realize that if you don't have a strong network as technology takes over, you're going to become more invisible and more lost. So invest today. And who do I want to build relationships with? Send an email to somebody who you already know and just say, you know, I haven't talked to you in a while. 
I'd love to get to know more about what's going on in your life and your career. Could, could we set up a, a coffee or a lunch? Try to do these things in person versus Zoom. All of the surveys show that Zoom's great, but we don't bond with people over Zoom. So make sure that you're doing your best to get in front of people. When you see people at a networking event in your community or a national conference for your industry, walk up to them if you already know them and let them know how good it is to see them and mean it. Don't be one of these people who comes up and goes, hey, so glad to see you. It's got to be sincere. But if you invest in people, people are going to invest back in you and that's going to give you an advantage over everybody else. And if I'm wrong, then you'll just have more friends. And that wouldn't suck in a world that's getting more distant. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Tune in every week. We're going to be back with more episodes here at Making Waves at Sea Level. Uh, and tell all your friends about the podcast. In fact, right now, go tell a friend to listen to this show. Thanks for being a part of it. Have a great day.